Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a pretty interesting discovery coming from yet another magnetar somewhere out there that actually suggests we've been discovering these FRBs or fast radio bursts without even realizing about it. In other words, what the scientists suggest is that we've actually seen these FRBs and they were always in our data, but we actually missed quite a lot of them. And one of them was from a very interesting magnetar that's very well known for its outbursts and for its somewhat predictable nature. But first, let's actually talk about something slightly unrelated. Something that might actually explain why we haven't been seeing these FRBs or why we haven't been noticing them, even though technically they were right in front of our noses. And this actually starts right here at the Parkes Observatory in Australia, a very large radio telescope that's known for, well, a lot of different discoveries actually. Since 1998, unusual radio observations were coming only out of this observatory, and a lot of them, in some sense, resembled what we would today call FRBs. They were these radio bursts in the data that no other observatory was actually witnessing. And if you were to look at these bursts out of Parkes Observatory, they would look something like this. Now, this surprisingly looks extremely similar to a typical FRB that we know today. And for this reason, for many years, scientists weren't really sure what to think of these unusual peritons as they were known. It was actually named periton after this mythological creature that was thought to not exist but some people claimed to exist. So basically it was almost like a joke. And so for practically two decades these unusual observations have been made in this Australian observatory but in no other observatory in the world. And well we've actually solved this mystery only about five years ago because the culprit for these unusual radio bursts was nothing more but your typical microwave. These bursts were caused by a microwave located at Parks Observatory that someone was opening before it finished heating up the meal. And apparently in a typical microwave, as you're opening the door, if it's still active, the very powerful magnetron that produces all of the uh, microwaves that are responsible for heating up your food is going to end up producing just enough radio frequencies to be uh, detectable by that particular observatory. And prior to the discovery, several papers on these radio bursts were published and analyzed, trying to discover where these bursts were coming from. But their actual signature, specifically things like polarization and the spread of energy, were very suggestive of these bursts coming from planet Earth and not from other galaxies. Except that some of these bursts were coming from other galaxies, as we later discovered. But the reason I wanted to tell you this story is because this is one of the reasons we initially missed a lot of these early observations. Many of the observations made by the various telescopes were eventually kind of discredited as being these microwave observations from a typical household microwaves or for some other unknown reason. But nowadays, as we discovered that many of these FRBs are actually real and are produced by things like, for example, magnetars, Scientists started to go through some of this older data, trying to discover if we can actually find something that we missed originally, that we basically discredited as something else. And just like that, a recent study that you can find in the description below discovered at least one magnetar, a very well-known magnetar, that was actually producing these fast radio bursts back in 2007, 2008, and also 2009. It actually produced several radio bursts that were unfortunately missed initially while also discovering a few more features of these specific FRBs from this particular magnetar that didn't really match with some of the other FRBs coming from other objects. Since 2008, this particular magnetar was known as an extremely powerful source of X-rays, it also produced some of the most powerful gamma rays we observed from such an object, and was also producing these unusual echoes, these unusual circular formations, all of which have been documented in a lot of detail for the past few years. But on top of the gamma rays and x-rays, it also seems to be producing radio bursts as well. And some of these radio bursts are very very similar to what we would call an FRB or fast radio burst, but not all of them. And what's more is that a lot of these FRBs, a lot of these bursts coming from this magnetar, were to some extent also happening around the same time that the x-ray bursts were occurring. In other words, there was actually a way to predict some of these FRBs before they even happened if an x-ray burst was also happening at the same time. And since several such FRBs have already been detected from the most famous magnetar, this one right here, the next step here is to actually compare what we're seeing here to what we're seeing in the other magnetar. And it seems that their emissions are to some extent similar, suggesting that the magnetar FRBs do seem to be slightly different from some of the FRBs we're observing from other galaxies. They're actually a lot, a lot weaker. 
significantly weaker as a matter of fact. Whatever is producing extra galactic FRBs seems to be extremely powerful. But in every other respect, the profile of FRBs we've detected from these magnetars and from other galaxies seem to be almost identical. In other words, some of these extra galactic FRBs could be produced by magnetars that had something very catastrophic happen to them, something that we don't see in our own galaxy just yet. Which is kind of obvious because we've only really discovered 30 magnetars in our galaxy and most of them are extremely rare. And though we've discovered a lot of other types of neutron stars, including things like pulsars, magnetars seem to be extremely rare. They seem to be some of the rarest objects in the universe. With this object specifically also being what seems to be the fastest spinning magnetar we've found so far. A single spin here takes roughly around 2 seconds. Now this is obviously much slower than a typical, for example, a millisecond pulsar, where a pulsar can spin up to about a thousand times per second, but for a magnetar this is extremely slow. And the second main difference between the magnetar we just discovered producing these FRBs, or I guess the second magnetar, and the first magnetar that was identified back in April of 2020, is that the FRBs in this first magnetar seem to be much stronger as well. Despite being a very powerful gamma ray and X-ray emitter, the strongest FRBs coming out of this magnetar are roughly equivalent to the weakest FRBs coming from the first magnetar. And what this suggests is that FRBs seem to be quite common, but do possess extremely different energy profiles in terms of the strength, while at the same time possibly being created by different means as well. Now what creates them is still a big mystery, we just know that magnetars seem to be responsible to some extent. But in terms of the similarities between these two detections from the first and the second magnetar, they do both seem to also display X-ray activity at the same time. And some of this X-ray activity is not necessarily connected to the FRB activity. So in some cases FRBs followed the X-rays and in other cases they didn't. Both magnetars seem to possess these very similar features, suggesting that maybe something similar is causing these effects after all. But for now, it still is a bit of a mystery of what exactly actually happens in these objects to create these effects, to cause these unusual radio bursts that are very difficult to explain. And though we can explain some effects, like for example certain uh, bursts that are caused by, for example, the shift of the core itself or the shift of the outer regions of the neutron star, or in some cases even some types of star quakes, other effects are extremely difficult to explain, and FRBs are one such unusual phenomenon. Right now there is no good explanation for what can possibly create such extremely powerful events that are sometimes producing as much energy as our sun does in millions of years. And so the only thing we can do now is keep looking at various magnetars and also other objects in the night sky, specifically using this beautiful telescope known as CHIME, or CHIME, I keep forgetting how to pronounce it and basically discover more FRBs, hoping to one day understand what's actually causing them. Now we know that it's not just microwaves in different observatories, now we know that it's also other phenomena out there in outer space. But what's good to know is that it seems that we haven't really missed any other radio bursts from other magnetars, because the scientists in this paper were able to go through a lot of different data trying to discover any other FRBs we might have missed. And according to them, these two magnetars seem to be the only objects in the galaxy producing these unusual FRBs. But chances are, we might discover more in the future. And so for now, the only thing we can do is just wait and hope that another study comes out, possibly explaining what's going on here. Although personally, I am super excited to know that we are just adding more and more mysteries to this incredible universe of ours. Because the more mysteries we have, the more reason I have to make videos for you guys. And on that note, thank you so much for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Or maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye